am Deboki and this is Okie Dokie Boki and today I am going to be doing a library check-in video. I haven't done one of these since like September probably. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure September, maybe October. Whatever it is, it's been a little bit of a while. The last time I did it, I'm pretty sure most of the books that I had checked out from the library were books that I was reading for the booktube prize, the uh, nonfiction final round. So I have talked about all of those books in my booktube prize finals video that I like, got to also very, very late. Um, so if you wanna hear my thoughts on those books, uh, you can check out that video. I'll link to it down below. Um, usually when I do these library check-in videos, I you know check in on the books that I talked about last time that I had you know gotten from the library then go into what I what I have checked out this time and uh yeah again because I had made this whole video I'm not going to really be talking about those booktube prize books I'm just going to be focusing on what I currently have checked out from the library uh, which is represented by the stack right next to me it is a little bit of a big stack um for me uh in terms of what I have been trying to do with my library halls I guess because lately at least in the past year the epiphany that I had had is that hey maybe I should be a little bit more restrained with what I get from the library maybe only check out like one or two books at a time and then actually like think about why I want them think about what I'm gonna read like be a little bit more you know just conscientious of like what I'm checking out not for like any big like important moral reason just to be like more thoughtful about what I'm reading because otherwise I sit and like <laughs> look at my stack of books and I'm like oh my god I'm never gonna read all of these and then I feel bad and then it's a whole cycle of getting stuff from the library getting overwhelmed and then returning and then feeling bad and then all of this stuff you know so the goal that I had had like kind of outlined for myself, I think uh, loosely, it wasn't like a very strict goal, was that I was gonna be, you know, a little bit more restricted with what I checked out from the library. Obviously, looking at this deck of books, you can see that I am not being restricted right now. And that was also actually a choice. I mean, I, act, I actively made the choice to check out a bigger stack of books this time from the library. Um, and the big reason is just that I am in like one of those reading moods where nothing is quite hitting right. One of the things that I realized from my year, um, like looking back on my year, is that most of my reading has been either nonfiction or romance. And so I've been wanting to read more fiction that is not romance, um, but also also not necessarily having a clear idea of what that looks for me and then also feeling a little bit like I'm in a rut with my romance reading maybe because I've just read so much of it that I've just kind of like inundated myself with a lot of books that are not quite hitting me right on the romance front either. So I had a few books. I had like two or three books out from the library already and was like, you know, I kind of want to read these, not really sure, but I had gotten in a hold from the library and I went yesterday to pick it up and when I went to pick it up I was like, you know what, like let's go a little wild today. You know, it's the holidays are coming up. I'm going to probably be kind of sitting at home just chilling for a week or two. So maybe I'll actually sit down and poke around in a few different uh, genres or something. Or not even like, I'm not going wild or anything, but like, why don't we, why don't we try a bunch of stuff? Like, why don't we just like go around the library, go to the new section, go to the, the back catalog stuff and just see if anything seems remotely exciting and then just check it out. I have actually read one of the books already. The book that I had had on hold that I got in yesterday and that I went to the library for. I actually finished that already and then the rest I am now staring down and we'll figure out um, over the course of the next few weeks which ones I'm going to actually read. So I'm going to be super transparent and say that I do not expect to read most of these books. If I do read them all that'll be super awesome. I, I, I would be super proud of myself um, but for now the goal really is just to have some books on hand to see if any of them excite me in, in these moments. So the first book I'm going to be talking about is The Perks of Loving a Wallflower by Erica Ridley. This is a Regency romance. Um, we've got our two heroines. We've got Philippa York, who's kind of like one of those like upper class ladies whose parents are like very intent on marrying her off. And then we've also got Thomasina Winchester, but she just goes by Tommy and her family. I guess they, uh, they like solve cases and stuff. I don't know. It's not completely clear to me like what it is they do, but she is very good at disguising herself. She disguises herself as a baron who's like kind of courting Philippa but like 
not really. And then they start working together on a case like involving a manuscript, trying to figure out whether this like guy plagiarized her, or they know he plagiarized this woman's work. They just want, they want to prove it together. And over the course of that whole thing, they get closer together. Tommy has always had a crush on Philippa, but like from afar and uh, over the course of the book, she's kind of forced to actually uh, shorten the distance between her and those feelings and Philippa. I did enjoy this book. I did read it all in one night, which I think is a testament to just kind of how fun and quick it is as a read overall, but I didn't super love it. I just, I, I don't think it's anything that's wrong with the book. I think it was just a hard book for me to get into. I think romance series, like, you know, some of them are, you definitely have to read all of the books to appreciate them. Others are very, very standalone. Like you can pick out one book in the series and you're good. You don't really have to read any of the other books in the series if you don't want to. But then there's quite a few series that are in the middle. Like you don't need to have read all of the other books to know the plot that's going on. Like they don't necessarily have an arc that connects to other books in the series. But having read other books in the series does help you appreciate things that you might need to be able to get into the book. And this for me felt like one of those books where because I hadn't read what I'm pretty sure are like previous books in the series, I just didn't really like get super invested in a lot of the character dynamics and a lot of the, I don't know, like the, the mystery around this manuscript like that they're kind of trying to decipher. I, I didn't really care about it. And that's like a semi big part of the plot. So that was a whole thing that would kind of come in and out that I was just like, eh. I don't really care, um, but I thought the romance was very sweet. I think there's there's a lot to appreciate there. It's just that for me, a lot of the surrounding elements around these two characters were just not really things I could get super excited or enthusiastic about. It could end up being like a lot of other books like this that are, like I said, like part of the series, or maybe I will revisit this as part of the whole series and then I'll be like, actually, this book is amazing. But for now, I think I thought the book was fine. It just wasn't a book that I like got super, super hyped about. Okay, so now onto the stack of books that I am going to be deciding between that I'm going to see over the next few weeks or however long, which ones I'm gonna read, which ones I'm not. So up top, we've got two Sally Rooney books. Um, I had this whole idea because I have not read any Sally Rooney, but I know everyone loves her books or not every, not necessarily loves them, but obviously her books have done very well, have inspired a lot of thoughts, has inspired a lot of great writing about her books and stuff. So I have been curious about them and yet have never really settled into the idea of reading them. But I thought that if I'm trying to branch out into like fiction that is maybe not quite full genre romance fiction, then her books might be a good place to go. I don't know. I had this whole project in mind where I was gonna read Conversation with Friends, Normal People, and um, uh, Beautiful World, Where Are You? And I was gonna read them all, gonna talk about them all, and just be like, hey, these are my thoughts uh, newly formed around Sally Rooney having read, the, her, read her books for the first time. That didn't happen. I had uh, conversations with friends checked out and had to return it. And I just kind of realized like, I don't I don't think I'm gonna end up doing this project, but I do still have normal people and beautiful world, where are you? And they're not due for like another week or two. So maybe I will finally read one of them. I feel like maybe I'll end up reading normal people. I love reading things with adaptations because I love seeing how things change um, and kind of go back and forth between how they're written on the page versus how people put them on screen. Um, so maybe, maybe I will read normal people for that reason. Um, but yeah, that is where I'm at with Sally Rooney right now. So next up is a memoir called Seeing Ghosts by Kat Chow. This is a memoir about grief from what I understand, about like the loss of her mother, but also kind of going through her family's history from China and Hong Kong all the way to the US. So I've been really like, excited. Excited is always a weird word when you're talking about a book about someone's grief where they're examining their grief. But I've been really excited about this book because I really like like Kat Chow's writing. I, she, I mostly know her from Code Switch and when she would also show up on um, NPR's Pop Culture Happy Hour podcast. And so I was very like enthusiastic about getting to read this book. I think the hardest thing for me with this book and the thing that is likely kind of keeping me from like actually reading it is the fact that it is a memoir or like like heavily centered around grief. And so I have to be like in the right mindset for that, right? Like it is a tough subject matter and whether or not I'm in the mindset for that is sometimes hard to figure out. I think what I've realized is that a lot of times I'll think I'm not in the right mindset for it, but then I'll actually like pick up the book, like, you know, whatever book it is that I think is gonna be really difficult. This happened to me with Inferno by Catherine Cho, where like, I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna want to read this book, but then for some reason I pick it up and I'm like, you know, just fully enmeshed in it. And so, 
I anticipate that that could happen with seeing ghosts. It's just going to be the matter of whether or not I, I kind of do that initial step of picking it up. But I am very excited to read this. So it's definitely a book that if I don't read this time, I'm probably going to get the audio book just because I kind of trust her, like her audio narration. I think like obviously she has experience with that. Um, and I think that might also be a good way for me to like sit down with this, um, with this, with her writing and with this book overall. So next up is Arsenic and Adobo. And I picked this up just basically like on that whim of looking around the library and just being like, hey, like what, what looks good? What looks good on the new books section? I've seen this cover a lot. And I think the real driving thing for me right now with this is that I think, I think, I'm not sure, but I think what I wanna read right now are mysteries. I'm getting really, so I've been getting very excited um, about the Nancy Drew TV show. Um, it is so good. Uh, it is like, it is one of those shows that manages to be bonkers, but at least so far in the first season, it like is bonkers, but in a weirdly, like at the right level. Like it hasn't gone full Riverdale yet where you're like, what the fuck is even going on? But like, you're, you're still like, there are, ghosts, there are like apartments flooding, there are weird, there's like lots of weird things going on and everyone's talking about this like it's completely normal and somehow I am fully sold. And so I'm loving the mystery of that. I think also because I just finished watching Lucifer, like I am just loving a good mystery that is also a little bit weird or a little bit like, you know, like not fully dark, right? Like not full, like Tana French, dark crime, whatever story. Um, and I think I'm assuming based on the cover and the summary that this is going to be up my alley in that regards. Like, you know, we've got a murder mystery. I think what, it, like it's based around a food critic who dies after like fighting with our main character. So I, I am, I am hopeful in that sense. I don't really know too much more about the book beyond that, but I think I was just kind of like fully judging this book by its cover and the fact that I kind of want a mystery. Okay, so next is a book that I have been in the middle of reading for like two years now. This is Milkman by Anna Burns. I am really, really enjoying this book, but it is kind of dense very dense. It's like this very stream of consciousness, abstract but concrete way of describing growing up in the troubles. And I have this on audiobook. And so in the past, I started out by reading the library book. This is probably the exact copy that I had before. Um, I was reading it. I was really enjoying it. But it's just, it, it takes a lot um, to just kind of sit. Like, it's just one of those books that takes a little bit more time to read. So I ended up getting the book on audiobook and I have also been really enjoying that audiobook. I think this is like, this book is such a stream of consciousness, but like very much told through this one character's point of view. So very like, first person heavy in a way that makes it really, really great for audiobook. I have this year found that I really like going back and forth between physical book and audiobook reading. So I'm thinking maybe this will be the way that I do it. Like I will go back and forth between my audiobook copy and having the physical copy and actually finish. I have, I refuse to mark this book as a DNF because I am enjoying it. I just, I need to actually sit down and not DNF it. Next is more on the mystery front. I kind of figured if I'm in the mood for a mystery, I got to check out some Agatha Christie. So I checked out Death on the Nile. Yeah, because I feel like I could use a mystery and I figured why not go with a classic. I'm also just excited because I really like this copy. It's like one of those like old kind of like collection copies where you're like, oh, this, this has probably been with the library for a while. Actually, maybe not that long. The earliest stamps on it are from like 2001 which I refuse to describe as that long ago. Um, the idea that this is like what like a 20 year old book looks like now is like very like kind of funny to me that like I could look at a 20 year old book and be like, that's old when like I've got books from 2001 and I refuse to call them old. If you guys have suggestions for other Agatha Christie um, books that you think would be good to go through, uh, let me know because I know there's like a whole catalog out there. And so I, I just kind of picked this one up because the title was the most familiar. Okay. so next. Next up is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I think of the books that I've checked out, this is the one that I am feeling the least likely to actually read, um, just because I've heard such mixed things about it. But I feel like it's also the book that most fits my kind of weird mood right now where I feel like I want to read some kind of fantasy, but like I'm not hitting quite the right notes when I like search around right now. And so, 
I think that's where this book fits, where I'm gonna try it. Like maybe give the first few chapters a try and see if I get into it. But I, I yeah, I definitely remember people talking about this and really liking parts of it and then finding other parts of it really slow. I do feel like it's worth it for me to at least try it out. And if not, I don't know, maybe I'll go watch the TV show and then use that to decide. Because like I said, I like an adaptation. I like an adaptation that tells me whether or not I'm curious about the book as well. And the last book I'm gonna be talking about is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. Um, this is another mystery-ish thriller book. I think this is gonna be less on the like kind of fun bonkers end compared to Arsenic and Adobo. I think this is gonna be a little bit more thrillery. Uh, I'm, I, I don't have that many expectations around the book. I just kind of picked it up because I was like, maybe, again, maybe this will be a thing that I am excited about. I'm really sorry that I don't have very good articulate reasons. Like I said, a lot of this library like haul is just me kind of throwing a bunch of things at the wall to see what sticks, except not really because I'm not throwing these books against a wall, but like metaphorically throwing these books against the wall, the wall is my head. It's me banging my head against these books to see which one actually sticks in them and which one is actually uh, a thing that I wanna read. So will it be this? We'll find out, <laughs> like I, I have no idea, but uh, I kind of figured if I'm in this mystery mood, maybe trying out something a little bit more thrillery could also be fun, especially if it's something that's like very fast paced because I feel like that's sometimes just what you need. You need something that moves quickly, something that draws you in very fast and keeps you invested to the end and like gives you a reason to hold on. Like if there's a central question, like, you know, a mystery kind of question, like, that's sometimes just what you need when you're in a weird little reading rut, or at least that's been my experience. So yeah, those are those are the books that I have checked out from the library. Again, I uh, thank you guys for sticking through my very inarticulate reasons for checking them out. And we're gonna see a month from now, maybe, if I can articulate any better why I checked them out, whether or not they clicked with me, what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them, and if I have checked out any new books from the library, whether or not I have actually clear articulate reasons for why I check them out. If you guys have recommendations, especially I feel like mystery is like, the thing that I keep wanting to try to get into um, right now and I just like, keep looking at mystery books. I think the way that other people look at romance books were like, they all kind of look the same to me right now. And I just like kind of need, especially like cozy mysteries. I just, if you guys have recommendations for like a cozy mystery series, like I'm totally open. So thank you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good holidays and everything. Bye.